Hey everyone, this is Jack. I hope you're all doing well. As is, I guess, tradition at this point because it's the second year in a row I've done it. I wanted to make a video in which I talk about the Oscars, talk about some of the things I like, what I don't like, what I'm rooting for, and overall my thoughts on the 2019 Academy Awards. So, I guess just to begin, I wanted to give a huge thank you to The Synagogue for sending me the t-shirt. They run a great Twitter account. They also have their own website and their own shop. I currently think this shirt is actually sold out, but... They'll have new designs soon, and I will definitely be taking a look at that, and I would highly encourage you to do the same. Um, but in terms of overall the Oscars, I kind of decided to do this video again um, before the whole controversy came out where they were cutting out cinematography and editing and some other pretty big categories from the actual broadcast itself, and we're going to do those during commercial breaks. And at least for my money, that is absurd. Uh, forget about like the categories itself. We're in like the digital age where everything can be live streamed, everything can be put online, and yet that's where we're cutting out corners. Um, so it just seems pretty silly to me, and I'm glad that they reverted back onto that. Truth be told, I think that was a pretty smart marketing ploy by the Academy. I think they got enough attention to, um, I guess, warrant... Um, yeah, we just weren't doing it. They obviously went back and got the discussion out there, which is, I guess, all that they were looking for. Um, but honestly, the Academy Award viewership has been going down considerably in the past couple of years. Personally, I don't even watch it myself. I just get the little updates as they come. So-and-so won this, so-and-so won that, um, which I think is probably the easiest way to watch it because the actual broadcast itself has never been... A huge thing for me. Um, I know that it's become a part of our culture at this point, but honestly, watching like the first hour or whatever it ends up being is like the red carpet and all that nonsense. That has zero appeal to me. Um, then you actually get the award show itself, and you usually get a comedian who I'm not too fond of um, doing their thing. It's just not my cup of tea, the actual broadcast itself. And especially now that we do live in that digital age where all the information is just available in a heartbeat, I'd much rather um, get the information on my own as opposed to watching a three-hour broadcast that probably isn't going to mean a whole lot to me. So I understand why the Academy is trying to shift some things up to try and get that viewership back, but honestly, it seems like they're pursuing a 20th century approach to getting that viewership back when going online, making things digital, making more content out there for more people is probably going to be the best approach, but that's just my opinion on the whole Academy Awards controversy because I'm sure some people are interested. I probably won't be watching. I'll probably be doing something else and getting updates um, and learning from that. So anyway, in terms of the actual content of the Oscars, moving away from that, what they're for, awarding the best films of the year, truth be told, I'm really not too happy with a lot of the nominations that came out. Last year, I thought they did an excellent job just getting the best movies of the year. I feel like you could have really gone through and picked any of the films that were nominated for Best Picture and make a really good argument for that being the best movie of the year. But if you look at the films that are nominated this year, there are a handful that I absolutely love, be it um, The Favorite, Roma, just all these great movies. And then you get movies like Green Book, which I, I just don't see people making an argument that Green Book is the best movie of the year, but... You know, I, it was fine, but just not that great. So anyway, that, that, I'm not too happy with a lot of the nominations. A lot of the movies that I'm rooting for, for all the categories, are going to be one and the same. There's certainly a lot of overlap between Roma, the favorite, my favorite movie of the year. Um, even Black Klansman, I especially loved. Um, so anyway, some, definitely some good movies, and I'm glad that they are getting the recognition, but I feel like there are just a lot more great movies that didn't get the recognition um, that they probably should have. I, I've spoken about how much I love Widows a fair bit, and um, it seems like the when, when you're Steve McQueen in your most recent film won Best Picture in 2013, or 2014, however that works out, um, and then Widows doesn't get nominated, it just seems like, eh, is Widows a better movie than Green Book? For my money, it is, but um, I don't mean to just pick on Green Book. There are several movies that were nominated for Best Picture that I feel like maybe didn't, didn't deserve that award. But um, anyway, enough rambling uh, about that. Let's kind of go through category by category what I'm rooting for, um, kind of who I think is going to win, and what I think that means, starting off with Best Picture. So personally, I'm rooting for the favorite. Um, 
for Best Picture. I do think Roma is going to win, which I'm super happy with. Alfonso Cuaron is excellent. I've discussed a handful of his films in the past, and I love pretty much each and every one of them. Um, wasn't too big on Gravity, though, but... Excuse me. Um, Roma is definitely one of his films that I love, and I will definitely be happy if that wins Best Picture. If black and white, foreign language film wins Best Picture, I think that'll be pretty cool and going forward. Ideally, trying to get more movies like that in the discussion. You don't necessarily need to be these big, moving, whatever movies. They just have to be good movies. And as far as I'm concerned, Roma is definitely one of the best films of the year. And um, that'd be spectacular for it to be winning and absolutely deserving. The category that I care the next most about is Best Director. I feel like that's probably the second most important category outside of Best Picture. Um, and again, I think I'm at this point rooting for um, Lathimos to win just because I love him, his work so much. Um, all of it. I'm a huge fan of his stuff, as I've mentioned before. Um, again, I think Alfonso Cuaron is probably going to take it. And I think he's the odds favorite we're doing sports betting on the Oscars. I find that pretty funny. But um, I definitely think he's favored to win, and I'd definitely be happy with that. Um, he's had success in the past, obviously, and for good reason. He's one of the best directors working today, and um, would love to see him find success. I don't see any of the other nominated directors winning, but that's just for me. In terms of the Best Actor-Actress awards, I don't... Mm, I don't think I'm the best judge of a great performance. I, I, I think it's just kind of the discussion around it is 80% of what wins the Best Actor, Best Actress Awards because it's so versatile. It's not like there's an objective best performance. Uh, some years there are just some that are so much better than the competition. There are a whole lot of different intricacies and different subtleties, and it's all about giving a performance that people are looking for. So um, in terms of who I'm rooting for, kind of up in the air at this point. Don't really don't really care about who wins um, those awards, but definitely is an important part of the Oscars. And I think Christian Bale is going to take the Best Actor um, award. I feel like he's definitely probably the most deserving of the others. Um, uh, however, I do think that um, Rami Malek for Bohemian Rhapsody is definitely going to be in that conversation, but I wasn't the biggest fan of that movie. Um, he was good, but I, it just felt way too formulated and just too... It, too much, not studio influence, but I guess band influence. Um, I was reading about how the, the editing was super impacted by um, contracts and how the different band members required um, a certain amount of screen time. And it's 100%, uh, not 100 but quite a bit of this film is being dictated by an external force that the creative people behind the film have no impact on. Obviously, there's a little con director controversy with the film, but um, getting a little bit uh, long-winded here. In terms of best actress in a leading role, um, the Roma actress, I hope she gets it. She was absolutely spectacular. Um, she definitely was just so commanding and so powerful, and especially with such a limited... Um, just limited acting. It was amazing how well she captured reality. So I'm definitely hoping that she takes it. Um, I would not mind if Olivia Coleman took it from The Favorite. I thought she was excellent and just made that movie so much fun. So you, you can 100% see my bias in these so far. But um, yeah, I'm not too concerned about the actor-actress awards. I definitely am interested in cinematography. And again, we're, it's a toss-up between Roma and The Favorite for me, so you can definitely see that trend. I thought the cinematography of The Favorite inched out by a little bit. You can certainly make the argument for either one of them. But um, the cinematography of uh, The Favorite just added so much to it. it was, it's that zany world and the match with the zany cinematography. It worked for me, and that's probably who I'm rooting for to win cinematography. But if Roma takes it, I would definitely will not be disappointed. Moving on to editing, I already discussed that a little bit. Um, the fact that Bohemian Rhapsody is nominated for Best Editing is just so weird. Y you can watch the clips. It's not a well-edited movie. Um, it's At best, it's generic, bland, nothing creative. At worst, it's bad editing, and somehow that's nominated for Best Editing. So that uh, it's just a bit confusing for me. Um, like I said, the Oscars are certainly a flawed thing, but definitely an important part of movie history. So what can you do? Not a whole lot. Um, 
So in terms of who I'm rooting for for best editing, it's either going to come down to Vice or The Favorite. I thought Lathimos was just so creative and the entire editing team behind The Favorite was just so creative and used it so well to help tell its story. At the same time, I really liked the pseudo-documentary editing style of Vice. Um, it was definitely similar to The Big Short and I love The Big Short. So definitely an interesting editing approach and if it ends up winning, I feel like it's definitely deserved. I feel like everything is deserved, especially when you compare it to Bohemian Rhapsody winning. So anything but Bohemian Rhapsody for best editing and I will not be that disappointed. As for the two screenplays, personally for Adapted, I'm going to be rooting for If Beale Street Could Talk by Barry Jenkins. Again, the fact that that movie didn't get more recognition, much like Widows, it's a bit weird to me. It seems like the movie that should have gotten a lot of recognition, especially when compared to other movies that did. But it was so well written, so well done. And I'm definitely rooting for Barry Jenkins to win that award. Um, for Best Original Screenplay, guess what I'm going to say? Uh, the Favorite. I, I hope it wins. I'm planning on talking about it next video, so you can see my excitement as I'm doing my research and getting all that in. So, But um, the favorite for best original screenplay, I think it's the best deserving, and um, that is my hope. So as much as I would love to talk about different things like best documentary, um, best foreign language film, best animated short, best short, best animated, all that stuff, um, I really can't say that I've seen enough of them and definitely want to make an informed discussion of the topic. So I'm not gonna go through those categories. Um, as I see more, I'll, I'll definitely be watching the winner of those categories because I generally feel like the Academy does a pretty good job recognizing that. In terms of best animated film, I think I've seen most of them and I'm rooting for I Love Dogs. Wes Anderson is spectacular and um, I Love Dogs is no exception. I did see the animated Spider-Man movie and I liked it, but I loved I Love Dogs. I feel like it was just so, it was, it was just the more, more passion was put into it and a lot of passion I felt was put into Spider-Man. So um, that's where I'm coming from on this issue. And a quick little promotion here. There's a t-shirt and mug shop in the description. Check it out if you're interested. But, um, Moving on to the other important categories for Best Supporting Actress. I'm personally rooting for Emma Stone. The two supporting actresses from The Favorite are up, and as far as I'm concerned, they were the two Best Supporting Actress um, performances of the year. I do know that um, often having two people nominated from the same film kind of splits the thing. You saw that with like The Godfather, how there were a half dozen people nominated. That's an exaggeration. Quite a few people from The Godfather were nominated for Best Supporting Actor, which meant that Al Pacino didn't end up winning, even though he probably did give the best because it was the votes were split for the Godfather supporting actors, if that makes sense. So I'm hoping one of them takes it. Um, at the same time, a lot of other great supporting actress performances of the year, so won't be disappointed no matter who wins that award. And then for actor in a supporting role, Mahershala Ali is excellent. He's one of my favorite actors. Um, just an amazing person, he's done a whole lot of charity. He actually um, went to college close to where I grew up, grew up, so go Gales if, yeah, go Gales. Um, so I'm rooting for him. I also thought he was the best part of Green Book and would love to see him take something. And then for a lot of the more um, costume and production design, I feel like Black Panther deserves a lot of those awards. I feel like it created such an immersive world um, and that that in large part came down to costume and production and set design and all the small things that are important but don't get as much recognition because they're just bigger things. Like the, the stuff that's not exclusive to filmmaking, like, like cinematography and editing are 100% exclusive to filmmaking. And something like costume design, a lot of that can be applied to different mediums. So um, I feel like those are kind of harder to quantify and justify almost, if that makes sense. Perhaps why they don't get as much recognition but um, yeah, I, I definitely feel like Black Panther deserves to take a lot of those. It just created that immersive world. And I know that especially towards the end, there is some Wonko CG. I'm not saying that um, the special effects award should necessarily go to Black Panther. Um, I haven't seen enough of the special effects driven movies to um, really make up my mind on that, but um, don't really care about that either, <laughs> if I'm being honest. So um, that's where I am on a lot of the major issues, uh, not, not an issue, a lot of the major categories um, I'm interested in what you have to say, so please drop a comment, let me know. Um, yeah, and if you're interested in the style of video or just me talking, I've got my list here going through some of the major categories of, um, yeah, some of the major categories of what's been nominated. 
So if you're interested in seeing more of that, please let me know and let me know what you think of the Oscars as a whole. Like I said, I'm pretty sure that was a marketing move to decide not to show some of the most important categories during the actual broadcast itself. And that was just them trying to be clever. So I don't know, what can you do? I won't be watching tomorrow, but I'll be following the updates and rooting for my movies to do well. So <laughs> that's my level of investment with the Oscars. And yeah, but I definitely didn't want to get this video because here we go on a little bit of a tangent about the Oscars. Um, because they've been around for so long and because they are a pretty good measure of quality of a film. Obviously, you can find the years where they got this wrong, and there are going to be a lot, especially when you look at like retrospect and how culture has changed and how we view movies in the present as opposed to the past. Um, it, it makes sense that you can point out a lot of problems with the Oscars. When you look back, they've done a they've got a pretty good trajectory of like getting at least one of the best movies of the year correct. And you can always make the argument that this is the movie that should have won this year, and you, you go back in some notoriously bad ones like. Uh, when Saving Private Ryan lost to Shakespeare in Love. Um, in fact, that's just inexcusable, um, if I'm being honest. But they, they, they do, you can point out the bad years and you can find all the top 10 times the Oscars messed up. But honestly, there are a lot of times where they got the right one correct. Like, I feel like last year with The Shape of Water, um, I think the year before that was Moonlight slash La La Land. Um, both of those deserve it, in my opinion. So you can definitely go back and find um, times when they did it right and times where it was effectively done. So, like, on one hand, I appreciate the Oscars as that. At the same time, um, the, oh, the, the, the live broadcast itself is just not my cup of tea, and I like movies about as much as you can like movies. So, um, I don't know, I feel like they need to kind of, like, rework some of that to get it as entertaining as possible. At the same, Like, if it was just going through this category, this category, this category, this category, like just going through every award. I'd enjoy it a lot more, but the live performances and all the stuff on the red carpet and the fashion house, it's just not my cup of tea. And I feel like they're trying to just combine different audience demographics like the people who love movies, mixed with the people who love this aspect, and just combining them all together in the live performances. And it's bringing different people together in a digital age where there's so much information and so much content available out there that just isn't going to cut it these days. So that's my general opinion on the Oscars. Um, yeah, I'm also like without getting into like any like political discussion at all. Just the very nature of like making something that should be like the history of movies is based on the Oscar, not based on that, but like it's a, the Oscars are a significant part of the history of movies. You look back, and then you get all these important like dates in cinema history comes from the Oscars and then you look at something like people trying to like politicize it and don't start a discussion of left versus right or anything in that and especially when you look at just American politics it's in that four years from now this isn't going to be relevant but the movie that won best picture that year is so kind of focus on the stuff that's going to be relevant in the future that's my opinion there are other areas to discuss politics and I don't know anyway getting all ranty here. Drop a comment, let me know your thoughts on the Oscars and the debacle and what you're hoping to win and all that good stuff. Uh, if you want to see more, please hit that subscribe button. Um, yeah, new video on The Favorite. Got excited to talk about that, very excited to talk about that. Uh, until then, my last video is going to be over here, which I looked at One Flew of the Cuckoo's Nest. Uh, unintentionally, um, about a film that won Best Picture the day before the Oscars I released that, so there's that. And also down here is a t-shirt um and mug thing so get yourself a mug and uh, patreon is going to put a link to that right there so anyway thank you for watching and we'll see you two weeks from now